Coming up on this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show, I've got news on a brand new ride coming to a theme park in the Netherlands. Along with that, we talk a little bit more about Project V, a brand new dark ride coming to Europa Park for 2017, and so much more, including Ask Me Anything, Merch Paradise, and Interact With Me. I'm Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide, the show, and that means it's time to cue those titles. As always, a very warm welcome to this week's episode of the show. Less than a week to go now until the Florida mega trip. I am so excited. That much so that just before recording the show, I've just been packing my suitcase and making sure that I've not put too much in there. I mean, a lot of you probably do the same as me. You put too many clothes in there and you don't use them all. So this time I'm going with a bare minimum and it means I can put more merchandise in there to bring it back. And of course, when I get more merchandise, it'll go on display here at the World of Theme Parks and I'll share it in future episodes of Merch Paradise. So excited for the trip though, the vlog is going to be absolutely awesome and I can't wait to share them here on the channel. Talking of vlogs, a couple of new ones got on the channel this week. Adventure Island came online, a really good vlog, one of the longest ones, an hour and a half long. The vlogs just seem to get longer, don't they? Uh, you know, we have some fantastic days out and it's great to see uh, that all of you guys enjoy our vlogs. Uh, like I said, the Adventure Island vlog is now online and it's well worth checking out. We had an absolutely awesome day. What was also an awesome day, but a very sad day, was the Bubble Works closing day. Uh, I, meant, I spoke about it last week, but of course the vlog's now online. Check it out. It is quite a sad one. It gets a bit emotional towards the end. I won't spoil it for you. Uh, but let's just say there's a big surprise at the end that's well worth watching for. Uh, and something we weren't expecting. It's really, really nice. So make sure you check it out. Uh, the Bubble Works final day vlog, now online here on the channel. Quite a bit to get through then this week. So let's get straight in with news off the rails. So first off, then I'm going to talk to you guys about a brand new ride coming to a park called Slag Heron in the Netherlands. So this is a Gerstler Infinity roller coaster. Now a lot of you will know if you've watched the videos for a while, I'm not a massive fan of Gerstler roller coasters. I just find them to be quite compact uh, and the elements are all too close together, especially rides like Saw, Speed, uh, the Smiler. You know, they're all quite a little bit jolty, a little bit rough. I'm just not a massive fan of Gerstler overall. I know a lot of you out there love them and I can see why after riding some of the ones abroad. And Nubis at Plopsaland was stunning. It's got a lot more sort of elements to it than just inversions, better transitions, and the ride's just more spread out. I think the problem with the Gerst Lines we've got in this country, the Eurofighter model, uh, we've got a lot where it's all very jam-packed together, very compact. And myself, I, you know, I don't really enjoy it that much. However, with this new ride, uh, Gold Rush, as it's called, this one looks awesome, and I'll show you a POV actually in a second once I've finished uh, speaking about it. It's a Gerst Line Infinity Coaster that's going to reach 0 to 55 miles per hour uh, across three hours. LSM launches, so it's not actually going to be three separate LSM launches, it's going to launch out, roll back, launch again, uh, do the same and then it'll be off. So like I say, it's a very interesting layout. It's actually the first triple launch coaster to be built in the Netherlands uh, and that's coming to this park. So I'm looking forward to sort of seeing it when it's finished. So it's going to feature a sidewinder element, kind of looks like a sidewinder as you'll see from the uh, you know the video I'm going to show you. But in another way it isn't, but that is the technical name, a sidewinder element and a dive loop in there as well. Uh, like I say, 55 miles per hour, reasonable uh, speed with that one. It's 100 one foot tall so it's not absolutely huge but it's got a good height to it like I say with these girl flowers I rather have a more sort of spread out ride instead of it just being bam there it is inversion 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 uh, like the smiler for example you know I'd much rather have something where it's all spread out but granted, at the end of the day with the Smiler, if they'd have gone for, to another manufacturer like B&M, Intamin, Mac, they wouldn't have been able to do such a ride with 14 loops combined you know like they have with, uh, with Gear Slide. so at the end of the day you know at the end of the day, I can see why a lot of people enjoy their coasters. There we go, struggling to get my words out there, but I can see why a lot of people do enjoy Gertz Lair Coaster. I just think they're not for me. Uh, the ones abroad that I've done much better, the one at Movie Park, Van Alzin's Factory, that was quality. All the theming around it. And talking of theming, this actually looks like it's going to be based on sort of the 1848 California Gold Rush, from what I can see from any images and, and the video that I'm going to show you here. So, like I said, I've spoken a lot about it. Let's have a look at a POV and some off-ride shots of what this ride is going to look like when it opens at Slag Heron in 2017.
looks really, really good, doesn't it? I mean, the theming, like I say, if it ends up anything like that, then they're on to a winner with this one. I mean, I'm not too sure what else there is at the park. Uh, I know there's a couple of coasters. I'm not sure about water rides, dark rides, and flats. Uh, but if I have a little look on Google, yeah, it looks like quite a nice little place and somewhere that I would like to get out to. Personally, I'd never really heard about it until they announced this ride. Uh, so like I say, we'll see what it looks like as construction continues over winter. Uh, like I say, Theme Park Worldwide, the show, will not be ending this year. We're going to go all the way through winter and follow all these updates as we get construction images in from the park. So there we go. Uh, Gold Rush. Next up then, Project V, also opening for 2017 at Europa Park in Germany. Now, when we was out there earlier this year, we had a little look around the area where this is going to be. It's going to be a new dark ride located in a building uh, very close to the entrance of Europa Park. Literally, you're coming through the turnstiles. It's going to be there on the left-hand side. Now, whether or not you're going to be able to access this attraction from there or not is currently unknown, uh, as you could potentially walk down the end of Duchess Alley, which is their main entrance. And then when you get to the bottom, there is a garden area just there with a the restaurant on. You could potentially turn left and the entrance could be around there. That's something I've also been thinking. So it's still in the Germany themed area, but it's not literally as soon as you come through the turnstiles, turn left and it's there. Uh, but here we go, a preview centre. Ooh, look at the preview centre. Here it is, look. Uh, that's going to be opening on Duchess Alley, which is the main entrance to Europa Park in the next few weeks. I believe that's going to be open from September the 29th. So if you're local to the park or going over there on holiday, check it out. Let me know what's in there because I really, really want to know uh, what details they're going to release. I remember going in the Arthur preview area when that was just outside the uh, the English themed area and walking around that and thinking no way is it going to look anything like that but Europa Park as always delivered and there we go you know Arthur was built and it looks absolutely stunning in there an amazing coaster probably one of the most technical coaster projects ever done a brand new powered coaster concept with the uh, the cars under the track uh, with them being suspended obviously a lot more technology was sort of involved in that than it would be a standard power coaster uh, and then they fastened it all to the roof and the structure I mean it's an amazing ride Arthur and one of my favourites a really good family coaster this will be unique in Europe and it's rumour suggests it's going to be a soaring style ride uh, if you've been on soaring at the Disney parks there's a few different versions of it out there and like I say soaring over the world launched uh, earlier this year and I'll get to actually go and experience that for the first time in Florida next week so we'll have a good review of that uh, soaring over the world which is now in Epcot so I can't wait to share with you uh, what I think to that one uh, the monorail was rerouted to allow for this building to be built and construction there's an, an update from last week I mean you can see construction has started quite heavily in terms of clearing the land a building we all know how quick buildings can go up steel can go up really quick so I'm sure that's going to be the next sort of phase uh, for this project project V I love it what's that mean project V we still don't know hopefully in this preview center when it opens like I say we're going to get some uh, more details on this one but the fact it's unique in Europe so yes to me pretty much soaring with a twist imagine soaring but screens all the way around so who knows what's going to happen it's going to be very exciting and of course we'll keep you up to date here on Theme Park Worldwide it's been a good week though for Europa Park as of course it was the annual Golden Ticket Awards from Amusement Today it's like the Oscars of the theme park industry and Europa Park won uh, the best amusement park uh, out there in the world for the third year running. I mean, Cedar Point had it for like, I think it was 16, 17 years, something like that. And then Europa Park have won it for a third year in a row now, uh, which is great news for the park, really, really good news. So a big congratulations to Europa Park and the Mac family from all of us here at Theme Park Worldwide. We love your park. It is my favourite theme park, along with the Disney parks. You do a fantastic job of running that place. So there we go. Thank you very much for all the memories over the past few years. and look forward to visiting you again soon. Uh, but there you go. In terms of other people that won awards, Valhalla at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, another one of the theme park worldwide favourites, that won the award for the best water ride. That's crazy. I mean, I love Valhalla to bits, you know, and the fact it won that is brilliant. But I do love Splash Mountain. I love Chapas at Fantasyland. There's a lot of contenders out there for it. And yes, Valhalla might not be in the best of states uh, at the moment compared to how it used to be. But it's great to see that a lot of people out there are appreciating a really good classic UK dark ride. You know, where else can you go in a massive warehouse, get soaked and see loads of fire? I can't think of another ride. You know, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's great to see that they won that. Cedar Point's Millennium Force has won the best steel coaster for n a number of years, you know, years and years. However, it's finally lost that title to Fury 325, which, don't worry, yeah, it's still owned by Cedar Fair. It's one of their sister parks at Carowinds in North Carolina, so they're not too gutted, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, Fury 325 looks absolutely amazing. Uh, B&M Giga Coaster, first B&M to go over 300 foot, and like I say, I can't wait to get out there and ride that. I've not done Fury 325, I've not done Millennium 4, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that myself really but I know a lot of people who have done both and they all say that 
3325, you know, is amazing, but they still vote for Millennium Force. So, who knows, but the majority must have voted for Millennium uh, for 3325 to take it from Millennium Force. So, interesting to see. It's nice to see it get varied up, though. It always used to be American stuff winning, and it's nice to see Europa Park uh, getting that award three years running. So, uh, a very big well done to them. Best new ride for this year went to Dollywood with Lightning Rod when it finally opened. <laughs> An RMC roller coaster, Rocky Mountain construction. There's been a few of those open this year. No known RMC projects yet for 2017, which is interesting. But if we do hear anything, of course, as always, we'll keep you up to date here on the channel. Lots going on then in terms of the theme parks. Of course, Halloween is coming up and I can't wait to start Screen Park Worldwide next week here on the channel. We've got a very, very exciting new section of the show to come next week. And next week you'll see all about it. <laughs> Merch Paradise and this week I've got something really really nice to show you guys I mean I only got this last week and of course I was there at the Bubble Works last day and I saw so many fans of Theme Park Worldwide it was great to meet you guys out there and like I say if you do ever see us at the parks make sure you stop us have a photo send it in for the show and it's really great to meet you guys someone took that to the next level last week a girl called Zoe hi Zoe I'm sure you're watching she made me something you know which it's amazing look at it I mean she made me this t-shirt uh, theme Park Worldwide, Bubble Works Final Day t-shirt. Look at that, it's even got a little rubber ducky on there as well. I mean, how nice is that? Hashtag Bye Bye The Fountains, 1990 to 2016, with a modified Theme Park Worldwide logo. I mean, Zoe, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that. I'm going to keep it forever here at the world of theme parks. It's not very often I'm given a gift, but every time it does happen, it's such a special experience. It, sometimes I forget when I'm here recording, you know, that it's going out to so many thousands of people and... You know, I just get wrapped up in my own little world. So little things like this, it's really nice when people send them in. It, you know, it just shows that you guys really do love the videos and appreciate what we do here at Theme Park Worldwide. You know, running the channel is just a, you know, is a massive part of my life now. And I never thought it'd be as big as it is today. And we've nearly got 52,000 subscribers. That is a lot of people out there. So here's to the future of the channel. And a big thank you to Zoe for this one. I've got something very, very exciting for next week's Merch Paradise. In fact, I'm going to talk quite a lot about it. It's going to be quite a long section. And it's going to be one of the best things I've ever got here for the world of theme parks. So I'll share it with you next week in Merch Paradise. Ooh. Questions, questions, questions everywhere. So it is time for Ask Me Anything, the part of the show where you guys send in your questions, then I'll read them out along with some answers here on the show. First question then has come from Tim, who has asked, which roller coaster that you've not been on would you like to ride the most? I've already spoke about it in this week's show. Fury 325. I want to get out there and see what all the fuss is about with it. It looks like an amazing B&M coaster, and it's one that I really want to experience. Uh, so thank you very much for your question. William has asked, if you were to open a theme park, where would you open it and what would you call it? That is a tough question. While it'd be here in the UK, I think there is demand for a massive indoor theme park. I think I've said this before, but uh, I'll go with it again. Yeah, massive indoor theme park. Not too sure, to be honest, what I'd call it. Something like Adventure World or something like an in a massive indoor indoor park with massive coasts and things but it's all undercover so when it rains people aren't getting soaked so I think there is demand for it imagine like a big golf course in there cocktail bar that sort of thing you know it'd be amazing I'd love to do something like that but uh, thanks for your question now William Carl's channel has asked uh, if Blackpool wooden roller coaster was to be removed what would it be and why and what should its replacement be this is a tough question oh a wooden roller coaster at Blackpool they're all great but I am going to say for this one uh, the Grand National. I mean, I, I'm going to get hated for it, but I love the Grand National a bit. But the past 12 months, this season, it has been a little bit rougher than it has been before. As much as I don't want to do this, I don't want any wooden roller coaster to be removed from the park. But if the, one wants to go, for me personally, the Grand National, let's get a twin track tribute to the Grand National. Even call it like something like the Grand National Returns or something. And it's literally an RMC, Rocky Mountain Construction, kind of following the same layout but with inversions. Imagine that. As it comes on them little camelbacks back to the station, imagine some inversions on there, you know, some barrels. It'd be great. But, uh, of course, I don't want to see any of the woodies go at Blackpool. But for me personally, if one was to go, I think it would be that one. I think the Big Dipper's that much of a staple and its location in the park as well. Uh, it should stay. Same with Nickelodeon Streak. It's been refurbished. It's in uh, the family area of the park. It works really well. I wouldn't want to see that go either. But uh, there you go. Thanks for your question there. 
Finally, Tim's got a question. Hi, Tim. Uh, he's asked if you were to build your own theme park and could have four roller coasters, three flat rides, and two dark rides, what would your selection be? Oh my god, this is very on the spot. Bear in mind, I can literally look at these questions just before I'm going to record. Uh, so, for my own park, I'd have four coasters. Well, Matt Mega Coaster. RMC, GCI 1 roller coaster, uh, a BM invert. There you go, that's my four roller coasters that I'd have there. Three flats, Mondale Top Scam because I love the things, a massive booster. Don't really mind on the manufacturer, but love a good, maybe KNG booster. Uh, oh, and another flat ride. What other crazy flat rides have I been on? Uh, I don't know. We'll go for something quite uh, simple. We'll go for an air race, uh, a nice Zampur air race with some good theming, like the one at Tivoli, uh, Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, that's a really nice theme one. So there you go. Check out the vlog from a couple of years ago if you've not seen it. Uh, two dark rides. Well, it's got to be some sort of Valhalla knockoff, hasn't it? Like a boat ride, not things of Vikings, but maybe a Pirates one with cannon blasts instead of it. Like you've got a lot of Pirate of the Caribbean inspired rides out there, haven't you? But I imagine it as more of a log flume with big drops instead of, you know, uh, going around like a Lazy River style. Uh, another dark ride, maybe some kind of, it's a small world, but instead of it being 2D theming, more immersive into the country so it takes you around the different countries but I actually did this in Roller Coaster Tycoon you know a few weeks ago it takes you to different countries but instead of it being all based on children of the world literally immersing you in these different countries as you go around and uh, like taking you to Africa and having all the different buildings and going around China and going to top, on top of the Great Wall imagine if you sort of dug down in the building and you suddenly came through some doors and you were up on top of the Great Wall of China and you could look down at the sides and the walls be there stuff like that you know I love messing about in Roller the case of Tycoon, but uh, there you go, thanks for your question. We've got plenty more questions that you can ask, so keep sending them in, guys. It's ask at themeparkworldwide.co.uk. That's ask at themeparkworldwide.co.uk. <laughs> It's time for the final section of this week's episode of the show and literally the week before we start Screen Park Worldwide again for yet another year. I can't believe that we're a week away now from starting Halloween here on the channel. It's crazy to think that this year has gone as fast as it has. So many park trips, so many amazing new parks. I've done more new parks this year than I ever have done so it's been really good to bring them here to the channel uh, and bring on Halloween, that's all I can say. It's going to be really, really good in terms of the attractions we're going to be visiting. Of course, it's all going to be kicking off in Florida uh, but like I say, we're going to have a very very exciting weekly series that is going to be a part of Theme Park Worldwide, the show that will be starting next week. So we'll have all the details. It's a really, really good fun series and I hope you all enjoy it. Me and the vlog stars have spent quite a lot of time putting it all together in the past few weeks. I hope you do really enjoy it and it's going to be very interactive as well uh, where you guys are going to get to send in your thoughts and uh, theories as to what's happened. So that's all I'm saying for now. You'll find out in next week's show all the details and see part one of our exciting Screen Park Worldwide uh, series, a four-part series to bring here to the show. Ooh, very exciting. Uh, there we go. So let's have a little look then at what you guys have sent in. Literally, this must be a bumper amount of people who've had photos with me. Uh, so here we go. I'm not going to say a photo with me every time. So literally... All these people that I'm going to list off now have had photos with me over the past couple of weeks at the parks. So first off, we've got Casey. Great to see you just there. We've then got Abby. Good to meet you, Abby. We've then got Mia just there as well. Following on from Mia, we've then got Harry. We've also got Jess. Next up then, we've got Aaron on a group photo at Adventure Island. So thank you very much for sending that in. You're next up, you've got Kieran. Uh, following on from Kieran, you've got Heather with me and Harry. So thanks for sending that in. If you see us vlog stars, make sure you send in the photos for us here on the show. Next up, you've got Adam there. Following on from Adam, you've then got Danielle. Uh, so there you go. Great to see you. Uh, then you've got Jake and she there with me. So great to meet you guys as well. Uh, Ryan's there as well with me. Told you there was a lot until <laughs> a couple more to go. Uh, next up, you've got Drew there with me and of course Chris as well like I've said if you see any of us out there stop us for a quick photo and send it in here to the show for our interact with me section next up then we've got some other pictures to share we've got Bailey on the river rapid so thank you very much for sharing that Stanley with a Mako on ride photo I can't wait to get on Mako next week is it going to be you know a Shambhala beta it could be me personally, I'm not too sure on the layout. I mean, it looks good, but I just think there could be a few more elements in there. Uh, but I'm looking forward to giving it a go and seeing what it's like. Uh, next up, you've got George and Mark on the Bubble Works. No, not the Bubble Works. Uh, you then got Dan on Bubble Works as well. Well, you're trying to make me cry this week. If you've watched the vlog, you'll know how emotional I got. Uh, and then you've got Laura Giles with the Colossus on ride photo. Loving that there, Laura. 
Uh, Harry has then got some coaster wheels he wants to share with you, so thanks for those. You've got Zoe with a handmade bubble work shirt that I showed you earlier on. There it is again. Thank you very much for doing that. I really, really do appreciate it. So thanks, Zoe. And Brooke with some pins on a theme park worldwide lanyard. Loving the lanyard just there. And just a little note while we're on it about the shop. Obviously, a lot of you have been buying your merchandise uh, online. The shop is now closed for the next few weeks, closed until I'm back from the Florida trip. So if you do email in, uh, then may be, just be aware, you know, we won't be responding until I get back from this Florida trip. So merchandise will resume mid-October. Uh, so I'll post it in the show anyway when you can uh, come back to ordering your pin badges and lanyards. Great to see so many of you wearing them out there, though. I mean, they're really, really good. I've seen a lot of the parks, you know, and really good quality to survive the water rides and stuff, you know. So make sure, uh, you know, you get these on when you're around the parks. You know, it's really good to see you guys wanting to represent us here at Theme Park Worldwide. Happy birthdays now to Chrissy Collins. Happy birthday to you. Good luck to Catherine with her GCSE years. So uh, there we go. Good luck to you. And also happy birthday uh, to Corinne Eubank as well. Thank you very much for all of your interact. Like I said, if you want to send anything in, interact at themeparkworldwide.co.uk and I'll read it out in Florida. Of course, next week's episode, it is going to be broadcast here from the world of theme parks. And then we've got two on-location episodes from our Florida mega trip. It's going to be absolutely awesome. That is it then for Theme Park Worldwide, the show. I'll see you next week for the launch of Screen Park Worldwide 2016 and the start of our, I can't wait to share it with you guys, our exciting videos series that we're bringing to the show. Like I say, it's a four-part series. Uh, every year we always do a good intro, don't we? A good scary intro for the start of the channel. This year we've taken it to one le uh, step further, one level up. So check it out next week, Screen Park Worldwide. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And that means it's time to cue those credits. Bye, guys.